Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Dr. Francis Kiniston Pearson. Uh, some of my patients find it easier to call me Dr. KP. And I'm a rheumatology consultant practicing in the Midlands uh, with my private practice at the Spy in Nottingham. I'm also a member of Top Doctors and of course I can take telephone consultations if those areas aren't convenient for you. So today's video I'm going to be talking about pain in rheumatic diseases. This is a pretty big question and it's probably worth just starting by trying to define what we actually mean by chronic pain. Chronic is a word in the medical world used to define long term, pain that's been going on for at least six weeks. Acute is used to define new onset pain. So if you fall and twist your ankle that would be acute pain, but if you twisted your ankle six months ago and it's still hurting that is chronic pain. It's quite important to, to separate these two because actually some of the chemistry and some of the nerve fibres involved are different and some of the treatments that you'll use are different. Now the question seems simple enough, how do you manage chronic pain with medications? But like a lot of questions in the medical field, the answer is not that simple. It really depends upon the exact cause of what's driving the pain and the type of condition that you have. If you're known to have a rheumatic disease condition like rheumatoid arthritis and you're struggling with joint pains, it's important to make sure that's not related to inflammation or activity of your joint condition. In order to work this one out, you'll probably need to see your rheumatology consultant, have a panel of blood tests taken and you may need some imaging of those joints to make sure there's no evidence of inflammation that can either be picked up on examination or through imaging modalities like ultrasound or MRI. If we don't think that the pains coming from your joints is to do with an underlying inflammatory process, and this is more of a chronic pain process, that's when we need to look at the kind of medications that aren't designed to attack all the inflammation, but are specifically designed to interfere with the pain pathways. There are several different kinds of drugs that can be used for management of chronic pain. Many of these drugs work on the chemistry system of the brain itself. Sometimes there's an imbalance in some of the chemicals within the brain, particularly chemicals like noradrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, and helping to restore the balance to normal can actually improve in chronic pain. Sleep disturbance is quite common when you have a chronic pain condition, and trying to restore sleep can help. For some people there's too much excitation in the brain, in particular if you have injury to a nerve itself and you may get tingly or shooty type pains. Different classes will work for different types of pain. Drugs that can help with sleep are things like tricyclics. You may have heard of drugs like amitriptyline or nortriptyline. Drugs that can help to try and restore the balance of the chemicals in the brain are drugs like SNRI agents, selective noradrenergic reuptake inhibitors. In high doses we can use these to help treat things like depression, but they're quite useful in lower doses for pain. A good choice here would be duloxetine, but it's important to start at a low dose and gradually work your way up. For calming down the brain, you can use a drug of the GABA class. This can make people feel a bit sedated and we're moving away from using them too often because there is a risk of becoming reliant on these medications but for some people they can help particularly with neuropathic nerve related pain. There are many other kinds of drugs that might be more suitable for your particular situation and of course as always it's important you discuss these options with a rheumatologist and if you need to have some extra help you may need to be referred to a chronic pain specialist as well. Yes, absolutely. Exercise is a really helpful intervention in chronic pain. It's at this point, some patients look to me and say, what do, you, what do you mean? You want me to go out and exercise despite the fact I'm in a lot of pain from my joints. And I think there's um, a difference between the perception of what might be asked of and what actually we are hoping to achieve with this. So if you've had a long-standing pain condition it's accepted that you're not going to be able to uh, go into a sudden boot camp type environment. But what I would never recommend is going from a low level of activity to a very high level of activity in a short space of time. 
What's really important is to work your way up with a graded stage of increasing activity. But what you're trying to achieve with exercise is retrain the body to feel normal signals and normal stimulus to a normal amount of input. For many people over months or years, they've become quite deconditioned. The pain has meant they do less activity. Less activity means they get more tired and more pain even when doing things that were previously possible and easy to do. Just like that didn't happen overnight, you're not going to be able to get back to where you were overnight and it requires regular input with a supportive physiotherapist that you have a good relationship with. Slowly retraining the body can help to improve the pain by enabling you to have greater reserves and resilience, greater muscular strength, but also just the activity of exercise releases endorphins, it releases endomorphins, which is the body's pain management system, and it can lead to a greater sense of well-being and physical fitness. All of these are good ways to help manage pain in the long term. And in fact, most of the medication treatment that you'd put in for chronic pain is designed to allow you to get back to the stage where you're physically doing more and more for yourself independently than you were before you were struggling with chronic pains. So heat and cold are both stimulus that can activate the nervous system. The reason we know something is hot is because a nerve picks it up as being hot. And the reason we know something is cold is because a nerve picks it up as being cold. So they work on a particular receptor um, and that receptor obviously sends information up to the brain. But those receptors don't just respond to temperature change of hot and cold. They actually can respond as well to chemicals that uh, work on a particular kind of receptor on these nerves called a vanilloid receptor. So an example, if you have a hot spicy curry, the thing that makes the, spike, the curry very spicy is a chemical called capsaicin. And you may have heard of capsicum, bell peppers, capsaicin is the actual spice chemical ingredient and how much capsaicin a chili pepper has will determine how hot it is. This um, can actually be used therapeutically because it can uh, cause the uh, receptors to um, open up very wide. You get a very uh, strong hot warm sensation um, and uh, it confuses the signals that are coming in from that particular area. If you've ever knocked your feet uh, or stubbed your toe and then rubbed the area very very uh, firmly afterwards it's a similar kind of principle. So the brain is able to filter some information that comes up to the brain. So if you stub your toe it'll send an information saying you've stubbed your toe to the brain uh, and the brain will, will interpret that and tell you that your toe is hurting. If you then rub the toe um, vigorously, you will have uh, a lot more sensation coming up from the toe saying there's pain in the toe from stubbing the toe and there's a lot of sensation coming in from rubbing the toe. And the brain will eventually uh, decide that there's too much information coming in from the toe because it's causing a lot of a lot of information into the brain and it'll send down signals to slow down the amount of transmission coming up which is why if you bash yourself and you rub the area you've bashed actually it does reduce the amount of pain you're getting similarly if you put a capsaicin gel onto an area that's causing a lot of pain lots of stimulus is coming in and the brain can calm down the amount of uh, signal it allows to come through, not just from the warmth that you're getting, but also from the pain signals that are coming through. Similarly, you can get the same kind of things from menthol, um, so cooling gels can help. As a principle, I would tend to say that if a joint is warm and hot and swollen, uh, or if it's a, an acute injury, a recent injury, putting a cold pack on is helpful. If it's a more long-standing problem and it's not uh, hot and not swollen then maybe capsaicin and that's something we like to use in um, in osteoarthritis you can put capsaicin gel on you just have to be very careful when you're applying those kinds of gels because it's chili pepper ingredient in it and you want to be wearing gloves and not uh, touching your eye uh, or going to the toilet afterwards because um, it'll cause a lot of stinging and a lot of burning because it's a very powerful uh, medicalized extract of chili peppers so yes Heat 
and cold can both be used in the management of pain. This is a difficult one to answer as, as a lot of these questions because it really depends upon what the cause of the pain is. So for example, if you have a nerve that is coming out from the spine that is being badly squashed by uh, a bulging disc or perhaps a very um, severe uh, localised area of osteoarthritis, then there may be a role for some surgery there, either to try and remove some of the bulging disc uh, or perhaps to inject locally with a steroid in a theatre environment uh, around, the, around the exiting nerve from the spine. Um, clearly if there's fractures sometimes they need to be stabilised. In some cases if there's a very severe and intractable pain uh, patients can have what's called an ablation procedure where the nerve that's supplying that particular area that's very painful uh, will have the nerve um, chemically, uh, chemically switched off uh, by injecting a drug that will reduce the amount of, of, uh, of signal firing that that nerve can do. Now as you can imagine these kinds of surgeries are not your first line treatment. It's really important as with all of these kinds of conditions that the first thing you try and to establish is why you're getting the pain. Is this from the activity of your rheumatic disease and can we control it better with other things that are contributing towards that pain. But in some cases where you've exhausted every one of the medications for the inflammation for example and you've already engaged with physiotherapy and you're doing everything you can with exercise, sometimes we do need to consider whether there's a procedure that could help. Now if you're thinking about procedures, the two main branches that are going to be doing procedures in uh, musculoskeletal medicine is going to be orthopaedics so they can do things like uh, improve the joint structure, either by, um, uh, either by causing a little bit of, of shaving of perhaps some areas of, of furred up cartilage, or of course replacing the joint altogether and putting a metal one in, for example a knee replacement or a hip replacement. And in the other main area would be in the pain management area. So these are specialised anaesthetists who look at specific procedures that can help with chronic pain long-standing pain management. When we think about pain, it's important to think that pain is not just about the physical sensation. This is not just about the chemical messengers that are going through a nerve or about the stimulus that's, that's making the nerve um, fire and tell the body that, that's, that there's injury there or that there should be pain. There's a huge component about what pain does to your day-to-day -day living and how that makes you feel. In fact, the definition of pain includes uh, the fact that pain can continue even after the injury has gone and can be present even though there is no injury as well. And it includes not just a physical sensation but a psychological one too. So when I'm talking about this if we think about, for example, heartache, a bereavement, for example, anyone who has been through a bereavement will be fully aware that it is an incredibly painful experience, yet there's been no physical injury to have led to that. A breakup is a similar, a similar situation. No one's going to deny that heartache in those situations is, um, is not real and not very distressing. You can have an injury that has long since healed that causes chronic pains. And if you have chronic pains and it's preventing you from living a normal life, preventing you from enjoying the things that you should be able to enjoy, engaging in work or with your friends, it is going to have an impact on your mental well-being. And so it stands to reason that as well as treating the physical pain, as well as trying to recondition the body phys physically, with physiotherapy and other interventions, you can in intervene with psychological interventions. And in fact, I would go as far as to say that in chronic pain, it's actually really important to include some psychological support to really get uh, on top of managing it in the long term.
depending on the cause and the circumstances that may be behind your chronic pain, this could involve uh, training and st uh, strategies like cognitive behavioural therapy and mindfulness, or well, there may also be quite a strong uh, psychological component to this. So many patients who've either suffered pain have either had problems caused by or resulted from their pain. And sometimes counselling and talking therapies or even um, psychological and psychiatric interventions are helpful in the long term of management of pain. So if someone suggests to you with your pain that maybe some counselling, cognitive behavioural therapy or, counsel or, or psychiatric intervention might be helpful, please don't think that they are saying to you that the pain you're experiencing is in your head. That is absolutely not the intention of any person I would know. It is certainly true though that if you want to get on top of pain management, you do need an effective strategy that not just looks at the physical side but also looks to provide health help with your mental health and ultimately the physical health and the mental health are not two different things they coexist in the same body and if we don't treat both with the same level then we're going to really struggle to get on top of a, a difficult condition like chronic pain so in my opinion the most important part apart from the medications and, and physiotherapy is the cognitive and emotional support